so that means that whole tribe was in essence worshipping this devil as the basis of his priesthood. Yes, everyone that, uh, that uh, succumbed to that priestly order and are still succumbing to that priestly order are worshipping the devil. Also, we've heard about stories in Maryland, human sacrifices, etc. Is there a link to that same order of priesthood? Exactly so. The devil is spread and uh, he's in different colors. He's, he attack areas uh, differently, but they all lead to the same thing. Would you say that the president of Liberia, Mr. Duel, who you were control, I mean, uh, protecting, took part in those rituals? Exactly so. Okay, in essence, was also worshipping the devil. Yes. He was even one of my sub priests because we had an altar in a mansion. We planted altar in a mansion. We use his position. If you can remember the end of 1982 to 1983, silence the free movement and the spread of the poro in the silent society around the cities. Limited even the Masonic craft because we thought we wanted powers, we wanted all the power, and it was our chance. To spread our traditional craft. We requested to him that everyone who was part of his cabinet should directly or indirectly pay homage to that deity. That is why that COVID was planted in the mansion. Would you be aware of any other political leader, for example? that may even be alive today, that pay homage to the same order? How do we uh, uh, call them uh, political leaders? But there are many of our tribal people that still pay homage to this, including uh, uh, my cousin, Joe uh, Wally, George Due. As a crown man, from that, Southeast, the sapo flowing down through that whole Putu mountain. Every other deity, every other god is received signature from the Agbeya where before functioning. Would you say that, that even the Pura and the Sando that we know of, all of the traditional orders are linked to the same deity? They are not linked, but they are, they are not linked to it. That deity is the prime god in the southeast, uh, the part of the Sunday, the born are different courts, okay. and they are also root. Okay. And, uh, they are also they also pay homage to the devil directly and indirectly. What do you think about the continuation of this priesthood in Liberia today? Now that you have been converted, are there other leaders that have cropped up now to take your place, and therefore continue it? Yes, I know that the priesthood, when I, when I got invited, and I was uh, with my spiritual father uh, in Banave, I, for, and to, be, to be brought up spiritually, person of Bishop Kung Kung, a lot of different traditional leaders like Kobe Kaifale, uh, Te Puya, they came to me to make the mayor of the symbol of authority that I had. And I told them I never had them, they were captured. And actually I never knew where they were. There were a few things that turned over to the church. And I told them the rest of them was in the COVID I had on uh, Cape Johnson Road. When we went there, we did not see We did not see it. So they were threatened. And a lot of them was being killed. A lot of them was being 
affected when they try to access the deity. So, uh, it was in disarray until women just went, went back to Taylor, Mr. Taylor, and told him that uh, he's able to, he said there's, a, there's an outrage of uh, spiritual uh, 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 power in the southeast. I'm able to calm that deity if I have the permission from you. That which it is a human sacrifice to calm him down. And I knew that at a particular time it got calm. Personally, I don't know how the world well by it. If he Continue with the pursuit, but the priest that died is supposed to be the Chukon, a particular tribe from the Sapo clan. Concerning arms during the war, could you give us any understanding of where most of these the military weapons came from that were used during the, for the different groups that you were connected to? When I was fighting, I was not interested in arms. Hard arms, yes, my boys had arms. But I was interested. I was not interested in art. I was only making sure my spiritual powers were intact. I noticed you mentioned just now that Mr. Taylor, the former president, was linked to this old man who is now the inheritor of your way. Do you have any understanding of whether Mr. Taylor himself may have been a part of this pursuit at one point or another? I can't tell. You said that uh, you asked SKD to Samaki to, to let his cabinet members pay homage to the deity. Did they do that? Yes. Yeah. All of them. They pay homage directly and indirectly. And there are some time we we uh, we make them we take them to Tuzo. And sometimes we make them to eat food. And every one of them that eat those food were indirectly in those foods was indirectly connected to that deity. Okay, so which year did this take place? 19, from 1980, the end of 1982 to 83. It actually started November period. You said you planted a part to the deity in the marsha. Yeah. Is that part still in the marsha until now as you are speaking? Uh, I cannot tell because I have not gone to the mansion since 90, since 2004. But you left it there? I left it there. And yeah, when they take it out? It's a spiritual thing, so spiritual people must take it out. When you were asked, what do you expect by coming to the TRC? You said you needed the people to forgive you. Um, knowing that you committed certain atrocities, especially when it came to your human sacrifices, some people may not have known, they may have known at that period that some of their children got missing and that some of the people uh, were killed, but they did not know who did it. And now you've come to openly confess to the TRC. They will know now that some of those things that happened during that time were caused by you, by your action. Do you expect every one of those people on hearing your confession today to forgive you? Uh, uh, just to correct you, I did not say that I expected them to correct you. No, I'm asking, do you expect all of them to forgive you? I'm asking them to forgive me, but I do not expect or to forgive me, I'm, 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 I want them to be real. If you don't expect all of them to forgive you, there may be some people who may want to take action against you in hearing this story. Will you be willing to face the consequences of your uh, atrocities that were committed? If anyone deems it necessary to take action against you, I was told that uh, yes, TRC can recommend. Uh, amnesty and persecution 
or prosecution. And I was also told that all of these statements that I'm giving to TRC cannot be used as a factor for anyone to, to take legal action against me. But I also know that uh, if anyone decides to take me to tax, everything I'm saying here, I'm going to agree to every single thing I'm saying. And that will be left with the law. Wheresoever put, I will be ordered to decide what it will be. During your explanation, you also call names of some of the leaders of your organization, of the fighting force that you were connected to, Nemo J. Are most of these people still alive? Yes, some are alive, some are dead. You may mention also of Ama Yulu. Yes, ma'am. Can you please explain his role? Was he a part of your organization or was he uh, leading another uh, fighting force? He was my subject as a priest to the tribe and he fell under that tribe. As a priest to the crown tribe, mm -hmm. every other crown man falls under my jurisdiction directly or indirectly. I decide, I advocate for them between they and the dieted, whether they know it or not. If the consciousness came to me for protection or to the dieted for protection, let me just clearly say that most of them may not have known that Nyakwea uh, 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 was a dieted even up to now. Some of them feel is, uh, some of them know it's a masquerade. Some of them look at it just as a rock that they go to to carry their problem. So in that rock was where uh, 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 my throne was, or the throne of the priest is. So people who were directly in contact with us. But in the war, Amma Yulu and Roosevelt Johnson were close to General Capet in the formation of this uh, uh, the Unimo when they were supposed to come back it was, it was another faction it was something else before Unimo just slipped out of my mind and uh, Mr. Kruma came in and uh, was willing to sponsor the, the return of the tribe in exile and all of my Dingo people that were in Serelu. But uh, he came in with, with funds for the position of captain. His intelligence, his military intelligence, his leadership, and what have you, uh, threatened any other person, no matter how much money you have, nobody will agree to go after you. So, uh, it's like there was a syndicate in taking up Kapel. One day, we heard that Kapel was killed. And everybody was accusing Roosevelt Johnson and Emma Yulu. When the Serenoon government investigated, they discovered Ama Yulu was uh, uh, responsible, and let him responsible, so he was placed in jail. That was where he and Roosevelt Johnson conflict started from. So when Mr. Taylor thought he needed somebody, uh, Roosevelt Johnson was playing stubborn to dance to his tune. He thought he needed to look for somebody who was uh, who had to be looking for opportunity to revenge or settle any differences between 
with Roosevelt Joseph. So Ama Yuru was an odd year person. And how he, uh, uh, his release in Senegal was negotiated. And he came to, to Liberia. So he was in prison in Senegal? Yes. You told us in your statement that your responsibility, your charge was to seek the interests of and defend of the common people. When I know Roosevelt Johnson not to be a crime man, what may you commit the committers? Why do you commit yourself to him in defending him and in protecting him? He was married to a crime woman. In fact, when the conflict came between he and Ama Yunu was the first was the time uh, many people knew that he was not actually a crime. Everybody knew him with uh CCOZ. Everybody knew him as the crown man when the when the quest uh, for power came was when people started digging his origin. But the interest of the crown people was what we were protecting. So even an American man who protected the interest of the crown people would be protected by us. We talk about the children in Cape Mount who were so to speak, protecting the arms of Tommy Hills, Tommy Hills. But you didn't tell us what happened to them. Whatever happened to those children? We didn't know who they were. We didn't know exactly who the children were. In fact, it was where it was it was that theory that I based you know, my argument on the on mill 2004. That uh, if on mill decides to buy arms. And not settling fighters have to finish on this country in the tunnel of an eye, and nobody will know who gave them the arm. If Ekmo will decide to pay for an arm, why you want person you brought 100 arms and they pay for it because we did not know who did it. Those children drop from the bush, the ground hog, all the way on our ammo top, and they put the zinc over it. You could not tell until the time of fighting the time when we needed arm came when we checked in the number one it was empty then we got to know that uh what uh captain major dad was buying arm for 200 dollars and one bag of rice anywhere you took the arm from so we never we never knew which one of the fighters they were small soldiers they were fighters you know a son with us uh, they were small soldiers with us so President was just giving them the money to steal the arm. So we did, we're not able to catch any one of them. You have a lot of good leadership qualities. Thank you. When see, somebody sees you one time, he likes you, or she likes you, by the way you appear, the way you talk. Is there any way you can use such a quality or such qualities for the good of Liberia, especially since? We just coming from war for the young people who are coming after you, who were under your command, who you command to go and, and destroy and do other things. Can you put those into good qualities for the good of Liberia? How yes. can you do that? Yes, sir. I started 2004. My army was paying $150 to $300 to settle a fighter and take arms from them. I went to communities and took arms without giving a dime. Presently, I went to the to the PHP community. Uh, there's a community there that was called, that they used to call Soladi. My person went to Soladi and changed Soladi to Zion Base. I took 50 terrible criminals from there by the grace of God and took them to the better church under the God Bless Liberia episode organization of some Liberian ministers and those 50 men gave their life to Christ amongst them was someone who was at the formation of the usual and famous crime in this country called Isakaba amongst them 
There's another one who formed, who started the type of stealing railway called Levy Park, and several of them. And up to now, those guys accepted living or they accept living in an unfinished building that was given to us by somebody around the police and Caliban facility. Three bedroom house and they are there by the grace of God they are eating three times every day from this same charisma that you observe. There is a strong, very, very strong allegiance among the people of the crime tribe to defend and uphold and protect the interests of each other. Very, very strong. One day I was talking with uh, President Doe and he said to me, Bishop Kula, the people of the world are accusing me of being of practicing with nepotism. I'm a crown man and I was taught by my people to seek their interests. What do I do? And you have that, you say that again and again today. What can we learn as a nation to love each other, to protect each other, to care for each other from that aspect? What can we do as a nation? As a people? Well, uh, I think uh, everybody has uh, their own life. And if everybody has their own life, they should have their own lesson plan. So now you know, uh, and, it's, and it's emphasized today, as you have always been knowing, that uh, there is a bond. So the nation itself can look at it, investigate it more, and see how it can help them. I don't think I can suggest it, but uh, from my orientation, I think uh, once a bound, a particular bound, is pulled up, it is not godly. Unity, love for human being, should spread across tribal bound, should spread bound faction bound, nation bound, in respect to the God who make every one of us equal. Once it is factional, it is uh, it express deficiency. So I don't think uh, uh, I can teach as for now, I don't think I can teach any lesson from there. The nation can look at it and teach a lesson. If I will advise I will advise the crown tribe to extend their bound to be borderless. Your appointment as priest was it a call it for was, your deity? Yes, it's or right. it was the vision of the outgoing priest. It cannot be the outgoing priest. It must every priest the man to fall on him from the deity. But how uh, uh, a uniquely or my case was this unique. My father was supposed to be the priest. The man who fell on him. But he was corrupted according to their tradition. He was educated and wealthy. He had some money. So they never wanted him. Uh, they knew that he would not defend the priest who fully. So the agreement came that he's supposed to be uh, uh, he's supposed to bring his first son I'm not his person, you know his person, well, Benedict. Uh, uh, Benedict was the first son, but the oracle rejected him on the ground that Benedict mother was a Norman woman and she was he was from mixed culture. So they insisted that my father will have a wife from the tribe who now who we give birth to a male child and we accept to be the priest. And the mantle fell on my mother 
who was already married with two children. But the tradition demanded that the both of them left their partners, came together, gave birth to the priest, and returned to their house, to their burial partners. That is how I was born. Is this preschool? Is this preschool a normal culture of your tribe from time to time? Yes. And the motive behind is to protect and defend the interests of the tribe. Yes, sir. Even if it is at the expense of the national interest? Yes, sir. And you said you were sent in 1990 to come and provide protection for the late president, Do. Yes, sir. And your tribe's members. Yes, sir. So your entire involvement in the civil conflict was not based on national issue or a revolutionary oriented but tribal protection. Very correct. You also said that whenever you ever demanded a child, a woman, a man for sacrifice were given to you. Yes, sir. Do you can you give us exact number if you know or an estimate as the number of persons that was made sacrificed for this purpose for this uh, uh, civil conflict do you know the number or can you estimate it for the benefit of the mission more than 20,000 no no I mean the sacrifice Yes, the aspect killing I was doing, majority of them was sacrificed from 19, from, since I was 11 years of age. Oh, so it, 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 so it is a normal tradition that a priest of your tribe offer human sacrifice from time to time, whether in time of peace or in time of war. Yeah. Uh, in time of peace, how you do it? Is it by annual? Some people are calling to their, uh, some people do it every uh, uh, big year, some people every year, some and people under every your, month. Under your peace school, was every month. Every month? Yes, sir. You planted a pot at the exact mansion, and that. The COVID, not a the pot. The COVID, okay. The COVID at the exact mansion. And he was asked to make sure that every member of his cabinet play I and mean, pay allegiance and loyalty to that COVID. Yeah. And that it was done. Yes. Was it done newly or unnewly by these people? Yes. Was it made clear to them that look, this is my God, and uh, you must play your uh, most of, them, most of them who consciously partook of it was his favorite. Some of them uh, decided to play it low, but indirectly, we make them part of it. Like uh, most of the time when you were, when you people used to go to 19th Street, uh, you talk to Roosevelt Johnson, yeah. he always used to see us eating a particular food, just white. Uh, so it's the same thing in the mansion. Those fools were a means of uh, uh, putting them on a subjection to our diet. You also said that that kumi was planted at the exact mansion spiritually. Yes, sir. And it is only a spiritual procedure that can remove it from the executive mansion. Yes, sir. Now that you have been converted into Christianity, negating that tradition, are you better placed to remove that from the executive mansion? 
no better place. And are you prepared to do so in the presence of this commission? Because one of the responsibilities of this commission is not only to find out root causes of our civil conflict, what precipitated it, but even to recommend a reform in our general society. Are you prepared to take, uh, to accompany us and go and remove that? Or is it something that has to be done uh, in secrecy? Can every one of you agree to a call to my faith? Because the instrument I'm using now, which is Christ, states two cannot walk except they agree. So until you all can agree with me, then we are at very big side to uproot and destroy that COVID if it still exists there. As I said, as far as 2004 ending to 2005, uh, during the Judy Bryan-led government, I went to that mansion. I have never went there. I have already started the process. The same 1982, we demanded to do that the flag of this nation and the seal of this nation be planted to the central point of the southeast worship environment, which is the Putu Mountain, so as to secure the head of authority that except you get signal or approval from that mountain, you can never have peace in at the head of authority. And the flag and the seal was planted there. 2003, prophetically, we we turned it over in Ghana. We did uh, a, 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 a prophetic exhibition of the flag and the seal, turned it over to the church in Ghana. And since that 2003 February. That people have been taking a brighter stage. It repeated itself at the better criteria. Presently, as I am now, it was also prophetic at the better criteria. As I'm, as I'm sitting here now, on the 22nd of August, I went to the Putu Mountain and literally uprooted flare that was planted there 2004, uh, 1982 in the seal and desecrated the altar as I said here. So are you saying that if all the commissioners do not accept your faith, you cannot, then the commission should allow me to go there or any of the commission that agree with my faith in the following day. Suppose you and your commissioners that are a member of, of the same faith, they can accompany you. Yes. Because we be want we want Liberia to be cleared of those evils that incite people to do destructions. I know you have conversion into Christianity of men and repentance. And if one repentance. All the phrase of repentance signifies one recognizing that what was done was wrong, pledging never to repeat that and number three to become upright. That is the interpretation of repentance. Are you now committed to that principle? Yes, sir. You said that when you're in law for me, when you remove, seize the arm from the Ecuador soldiers, and it came to you, you and the men there at the time, what the arm, 
crowd to talk to them, to get the arm from them, they refuse. So what's happening to the Ekumon soldiers that were here? We come into fight. Uh, we lose men. They also lose men. Our men were old because their arms were in their position, possession. Everyone who, before they left their arms, they make sure they, they lavish the ammunition. And then they escaped, jumped in the bush, came back to Bomi. They came back to Bomi. It was declared, war was declared against us, and our picnic men was arrested by an Some of them was killed. That was an uh, escalated fight that led to the capture of the Amotech. You also mentioned in your statement that uh, when the Ekumon soldiers fell in the ambush, you took their uniforms and their ammunition, you went to kill them. And then the uh, Sandin Society released some Ekumon soldiers to you. How many men were released to you at the time? I did not go for the releasing of those men. But uh, they were more than uh, 44. And were they part of the massacre as well? Yes. They what were, happened to them? They were killed. You also said that when you were a general, you trained some children. But can you tell us briefly, during the time of the conflict, what were some of the things that happened to women? in your areas of control. Were there any about women who knew about it yet? If there were any people, please tell us. Actually, in my control area, the people I fought with was seriously warned that I'm sure of against two things. Women and looting. Women for the reason of my spiritual uh, accuracy for my spirit, for the spiritual powers I had to, to be accurate. Two, looting because I knew that uh, with the same orientation of the tradition, that once one is wealthy or one is educated or one is very friendly, he easily bring bread. We never wanted them to loot so as to keep them mean because once they were looting and they have some uh, money, some properties, they will have divided attention so they will not be as effective as if they were if they are desperate. So uh, I cannot I cannot count. Yes, there are a few ones that went on, but it was actually not too much knowledge. As a general, you never committed crime against any women? Like I said, not to my knowledge. You were a priest at an early age and now you are an evangelist. How can you compromise both? <laughs> they cannot be compromised. Both of them are not, they are of two different opposite order. One is evil, which is a uh, traditional priesthood, and uh, one is extremely honorable. I wrote a book here that I uh, have a detail of my life to an extent, and it's called Trading Priesthood for Royal Priesthood. If you look on the book, you will see the print, the first preschool is, uh, is not as bold as the second preschool, suggesting that the first preschool is far lighter, is honoring, more colorful than the present preschool. So they cannot, they cannot be compared. Now, since you became an evangelist, what have you done to extend this knowledge to other people, other Liberians, either in your tribe or outside your tribe? Because you have so much love now. I've been preaching. I've been preaching to members of my tribe. Today, my second brother, the one I'm next to, is a pastor. One of the 
fasted, uh, growing church in Ghana, uh, junior brothers gave their life to Christ, all of uh, members giving their life to Christ, I just said, I went there to dissipate where their power comes from. All these things I'm doing so that the tribe may have a true meaning in the coming generation. Considering the historical issue of the 1980 uh, killing of the late President Hubbard by the late President Doe, and the things that you've just shared with us, I would like to ask you, in your relationship with the late President Doe, have you ever had any inkling to believe that the, that particular killing was not something he personally planned and executed, that it could have been done another way, that he became the inheritor of it? The relationship between uh, the late President Doe and myself was strictly spiritual and not political and I think uh, uh, I did not have any need. Before then, at that time I was about nine years of age so I was not the priest then. I became the priest and he was already two years in power and uh, uh, he had no relevance. Every time he came to me he wanted to know what is going on? Who is against him? This is happening. Is it true? What can I do? And what have you? So it was not, it, it, there was no time that we, we discussed that. The old man Swain that passed away, you said that, well you didn't say passed away, but you said he left. And then as a result, you had to now inherit his position. Did you ever find out what happened to him? Not inherit his position. Uh, we, we were running what well, I'm out of uh, an invite of position. I was the head. Oh. I was his head. But experience, because the very priest who I was holding, there was uh, there was an interim time when my father was supposed to be the priest. And uh, he was waiting for the priest, the actual priest to be born by my father. He was officiating the details of that diet. So he left his own diet, Queen Yeswa, to come down to the where he officiated details. After he left, when he left, he went and then he was consulting for Mr. Taylor. He actually saw from experience that the war was going to go against us. Now how he went, he started consulting for Mr. Taylor. It was one of the things that gave us even a uh, more tough time because our spiritual terrain was being tempered away on a daily basis because he knew it. Do you know whether he's still alive or what? He should be dead right now. He should be dead. Yes, I, I heard that. Yeah. Desecrated, they fled and seen a brutal mountain <coughs> when? What year you did it that you went back to do it? Last year, August, August. 22nd. Breaking. In your story before us that I have, you said, after I read, and you can just verify for the public, you did not only give single handedly support, spiritual support to the Crown tribe, but you also did it to the Sapos. Am I correct? The Sapos is a section in the Crown. It's just a political interest that is trying to divide. If you even look in the Sistine tribe of Liberia, Sapo is not there. Okay. You said that even when a member of the of those tribes were fighting with other forces, you came, they came to you and you protected them, even to the extent that your brother was fighting with NPFL and he came to you, you blessed him 
and there was a time you came face to face that you could have killed him or he could have killed you or you couldn't do it because you couldn't share each other blood. Is that true? Yes. You know that God has forgiven you and if you should die now, you will go to heaven. But you must be responsible for the things you did. Right? Yes, that is what I'm here. But now that you've taken oath in this sacred hall before the commissioners and the Republic of Liberia, uh, my colleague, Commissioner Umusila, asked you whether you've raped anyone, and you said to your recollection, no. I want to remind you that in Aracos, when you went to Aracos, to that house with a lady, someone identified you. And they said that you had raped their sister and killed her. And the lady got annoyed. And you begged for forgiveness. And uh, you talked to them. You can remember that incident? Yes, but uh, it is not it is not right in place. It's even put it in my book. My boys, mm -hmm. my boys, the, uh, I have boys behind me mm -hmm. who was the exact perpetrator of that act. Okay. They, were in a, they were in a relationship with a girl. Mm -hmm. And then she also had a relationship, they said they had a relationship with a, with a NP or Justin or group mm -hmm. that they used to come to that uh, MKK yard. He used to come there and sleep there, and the family was hiding, uh, hiding home. And then uh, the boys went. The boys went there, and confusion opened between uh, the, the, the lady who had also had a relationship with uh, Chris Farley. Then they went and uh, collected my boys and beat them. But my boys were actually. My boys were actually small children. So I went there in order. The whole family, all the girls in there being raped. Yeah. You said you really didn't have the desire for sex was not for the flesh. But it was spiritual. Exactly so. And you had that charm, that, that deity made you bitter. And you developed that hatred, so even though the women were willing to go on with you, but you couldn't do it right away. You had to create bitterness and hatred within them. You beat them up, bruise them before you could go with them and rape them. I mean, and have sex with them. That too. I mean, during that period when you were under that spell. Yes, yes. That's, that is also a traditional ritual. Yes. Have you had an. Former military training? No. What is the state of your relationship with your kinsmen at this time? To an extent, is that is that strong? The ones who have accepted Christ and uh, some of the civilized ones who have accepted Christ and accepted me, and, uh, but it is not too strong with the, the, to the way the norm relationship supposed to be. In civics, we were taught to respect our flag and the seal of the country. How significant are these two national symbols spiritually? They are the wings, they are the part, they are the pillow of every nation because the flag is a kind of a worship emblem. The seal is the confession and the depth of the worship. If you look on our seal, the God we trust, if you look on our seal, the law of liberty brought us here, whatever it is, is planted in the, in the conscience of every body that is born. In that nation. So making ritual, having spiritual control of it, give you 
unusual opportunity over other people who do not have spiritual understanding or spiritual control of it. Every human being is guided by their belief. And their belief is expressed through the art of worship. If we all just decide to respect and worship this microphone, automatically the power that was implanted in us by our maker make this microphone very dedicated. And anyone who has it in their head will automatically be paid keen attention to. Unusually, that nobody will know why they should respect that person. It's because they have come in control of what you all believe. So the flag of a nation and the seal of a nation is a serious symbol that pledge are pronounced to consciously or unconsciously. If you call the librarian kid now, you may not know how to pronounce the words, but the tool his play will be a legend to his play. So catching such a symbol is catching a big portion of the nation. So it's very important that as a nation and people will respect our flag and our seal. You were you had a spiritual relationship with former president Do. Yes, sir. Uh, did you see him regularly? Did you have direct access to him anytime? Or it was such that you wouldn't see him when he sent for you? Anytime I wanted to see him because I was on a watch for him. But uh, if I had a current, because most of the time, if he understood the spiritual rule effectively, he wouldn't come, he wouldn't, uh, come to me. Because the truth here, I'm on the fence. I'm supposed to be watching for him. So whatsoever he think is evil, I'm supposed to see it first. Except our core is temporary, which happened when uh, 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 Prince Johnson, uh, the Honorable, then the leader for the uh, IPFL went into the Barry he went to break the core that was existing between whatsoever, whatsoever protection do has protection with and to activate the core that was planted in him by the borough society at Quita Wele in Bon County. With that background, if he knew there will be no need to come consulting me because I'm supposed to be watching him once the coil is intact. And once the coil is intact, whatever evil that is coming to him, whatever good that is coming to him, besides him, any other person that is you know, keeping the corridor intact, the coil, spiritual coil intact, I, will, I should see whatsoever harm coming to me like a prophet. There will be no need for the king or anyone to go to the prophet and say, well, I've come to consult you. Once he's in mind, the prophet's eyes will always be open to see harms and blessings that are supposed to be coming to him. But I could go to him at will. One of night, one of day. So Prince John says, Entry at the barracks broke that core because Prince Joseph came to do just that. Was his entry against your advice? Exactly so. During the reign of the president, he had a series of frauds 82, 85, and several coup attempts and all of that. What went wrong? 
many of them was that was that uh, actual groups to my knowledge because most of the time that he will complain to us we discover that there is no spiritual threat no spiritual alarm if such alarm was was there we would have seen it few of them was actual some of them was just advice from other sources that he had he took advice from were you aware that he was leaving the mansion for the free boat of Monrovia? It was when the court was uh, tempered with. Uh, the spiritual thing takes a long time, you know, to explain. But uh, uh, as by the time the NPFL and IPFL have captured almost 92 percent or more of the country. It was tedious for us to access real spiritual power because our souls, we had a COVID in the mansion, yes, but it need to be fed by the bigger, uh, by the souls, by the bigger, uh, biggest uh, COVID or the capital COVID, if we we'll call it. And, uh, It's fear that is from here to Great Chile was totally black block. So we needed to go to Freetown, Guinea, Ivory Coast, slip through Chile to enter Putu Mountain for power. When we get there, we go back the same way. And going through that rate. It's ex you ex you spend it. It's like you left from here to go to uh, Nigeria for uh, five hundred dollars, and it's five hundred dollars the person owe you. So you decide to take car. Maybe you don't want to take plane because it will finish. So when you get to Nigeria, whatsoever you use will be one fifty. To come back, you need to see one fifty. So profit wise or uh, ration wise, only 200 will be left with you. So going through our, our Sevenone, Guinea, Africa's, we were asking and paying homage to the fears we were using because they were not enemy, they were commercial people, but flying through from Liberia, from Monrovia straight to Grand Gide was risky for us. So we could not venture that side. So I say this to say that uh, our powers was 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 not was getting dogged every day. That is why actually the, the killing was unusual because if you needed to take uh, uh, three, uh, you needed to take three person for the sacrifice. And you go into Africa's Guinea, uh, two Sevenone Guinea Africa's. You have to take more because you don't know what a spiritualist in Seredo will ask for, what he will ask for in Guinea, what he will ask for in Africa before coming to Liberia or before coming back to Africa or, or, or Chico before coming back. So our power was, uh, was, uh, uh, was depreciated. So when he came and made that impact, before we recover, it was late. In the right mind of President Doe, he could never come to Freeport with the death of men he went with. Especially considering the group and the death of men. He didn't even carry the actual fighting men with him. So there was no way that he could go with us as a military man, one, as a traditionalist to go with that type of manpower. He was strongly believed, and still would the deal to believe that he was spiritually controlled. So at the time the president then for the free proof, where were you? I was in my shrine, at my dead shrine at the Sony Way. What happened on that fateful day as far as the supporters, the king's men, the fighters of the president? were concerned. Frustration. Burning down houses. 
you're the people who you thought, who you think, you know, uh, where, where that actually for the cause of the crown, everybody was ready to die. Everybody thought, you know, they should just die. So they were just on the rampage causing destruction to any other person. He said it was against your tradition for a crime to share the blood of another crime. Except the court, the court, the traditional court is broken. What was the traditional court? I was broken between Flaxamita and the late president. I motivated his arrest and execution. If you know. The president had an interest and uh, Flaxamita did not execute the interest to the court. He was not able to execute the interest. Like now, no traditional person would name their child Kayan Do. Because they thought he never died as the hero they expected. So the same way, he accepted the cause, except he could do it, play his game very well, and he was not able to deliver. It was a complete betrayal. Uh, uh, Kana Shiwe, who was one of the commanders at, at, at Shotman, wanted to play it very well. He thought he could play it very well. And Transabeton uh, said, say he play it well. So he did not play it as president as it was planned. It was betrayal to the position as the first man. But to some extent he died for the cause also of the trial in, in other interpretation of and you know the traditional in order he died though he did not play it well but uh, his people was at peace and uh, counseled them that uh, he died for one of the trial you limo was formed Say by the crown people initially after Do died. Can you tell us where it was formed? In which which country? If you know. No, it's one in seven. Mr. Witness, we want to thank you very much for coming to the TRC and sharing your experience and giving your testimony to this commission. We assure you that uh, you have contributed immensely to our work. And all of what you have said have added to our experience, have given us information useful to get to the nitty gritty of our conflict, especially as it relates to what transpired between 1979 and 2003 and the root causes of the conflict. Uh, the Commission is pleased that you could have volunteered to come forward and do this for the people of Liberia and all of us. Before you leave this tent, is there a last word, a final word you have for the Commission, the people of Liberia? Uh, first to the Commission, I want to say thank you. And I want to say uh, there are some of you that will be that will be embarrassed or will be embarrassed by our person. Uh, coming to visit you all and sticking around your people. But logically, if a man and another person got into a conflict and the one who knows, who conscious 
is telling him that he's wrong. In his, in his inner heart, he will be praying for intervention. The one who is affected or the, the, the victim for that conflict, may that one peaceful settlement will always want some kind of revenge. So the one who is coming to settle that conflict peacefully, Gentlemen, settlement. I believe he is uh, he's doing good more to the perpetrator than the victim. That is how I see you, that uh, you are trying to help me and every other fighter reconcile with our victim. So I want you to say, Please forgive us and don't be embarrassed in our presence because as for me, Christ has delivered me, but I see you as a champion, heroes who are trying to champion my heart desires. And I will always be at your call. I will always be coming around to know whatever way some came to agreement that the income from this book is going to be saved to an account into an account to help or facilitate everywhere 